Hello guys, welcome back to our backyard fish farming series. In previous episode, we've showed you guys how we set up these tanks. And we've also showed you the daily farm management practices that we perform over here. And in today's episode, as we said, we are going to teach you how to select a species, how to compare the market demand for that species, and then also look at the local climate for the kind of species you want to culture. So if you've been joining us and you've been following us, you see that uh, behind me we have our tanks over here. And for a quick recap, we have two tanks, tank A, tank B, where we have tilapia. Tank A is not aerated, tank B is aerated. And now you can also see a new setup behind me, that is tank C. And in tank C, we have catfish. In our backyard, we have some tilapia and then we have catfish. That is what we have decided to farm. But then in a lot of backyards, people are doing barramundi, some are doing koi, perch, some are also doing shrimps, and a lot more. So in today's episode, we are just going to discuss how you can choose the right kind of species so that you can also enjoy your farming. Let's get into it. So for the first point, if you would want to identify which of the species you can culture, uh, you ask yourself just two quick questions. Uh, are you trying to culture it to eat or sell? Or are you trying to culture it for ornamental purposes? You know, there are people who keep fish and there are people who sell fish. So if you are going to sell the fish, then you want to find out what is the market demand for the fish you have available. So in Ghana, for example, a lot of the fish that uh, people do get, which is uh, freshwater fish, is tilapia and then catfish. Even with that, a lot more people consume tilapia as compared to that of uh, catfish. The only thing here is that uh, the catfish market is also growing. A lot of people are now trying new recipes with their catfish. But all the same, you have to identify amongst these two which one of them would meet the demand and what you want to do. The second bit will be with respect to the price. Uh, a kg of uh, catfish is sold around 35 cities per kilo after a, a, a six months of production, right? And then when it comes to uh, catfish, uh, the kg is also around like almost the same 35. In some farms, that's farm gate price. In some farms, it's a little bit slightly above that of uh, catfish. But again, it, it depends on who you are buying from and the kind of market you are working with. So that's the first thing. And then the second thing you want to look out for is uh, what kind of species is predominant in the location you find yourself in. So if you are in Ghana, you are in West Africa, then yes, tilapia and catfish is what you should look out for. Maybe there are a sect of people who would want something that is not predominant. Then you go to the next point, that will be that you are looking for the set of fish that you can easily find them. And then if for any reason you choose to culture fish which is not catfish or tilapia, then you need to understand the parameters of the fish, one, and then two, check the availability of the required feed for that particular species. Uh, before doing this, I have, looks like I already have one fish that is gone. All right. So, let's try and then So, um, when you look at this particular one, this tilapia is uh, now tilapia. Right, and then um, I would like to go inside again. So you can see this one has a bit of some spots all around it. So I'm thinking this one is uh, the spotted um, uh, ones as well. And uh, from the observation in this tank, we can see different growth rates. Um, ouch.
This is the biggest we have in this tank. And I am very much amazed. I would want to weigh this guy to see how much. Um, I'd want to just quickly just try and weigh this guy so I'm not letting him down. All right, so um, I have my scale here. It's already at uh, zero grams and I'm trying to get to the biggest fish I think we do have here. I think you said the water is a bit warm. And we have a 22, 23 grams fish already. Come on. Take your time, take your time. All right. So again, tilapia, uh, one of the reasons why people culture tilapia in their backyards is also because of the fact that they grow a little bit more faster. Um, I haven't paid extreme attention to these guys and already in two weeks, I'm seeing a tremendous uh, uh, growth um, amongst some of them. Uh, let me see if I can find uh, a few smaller ones. This is very, very tiny, very, very tiny. And my scale is already showing me three grams. What's happening? All right. So yes, my scale is now on uh, zero. And I want to bring Tiny. Tiny is five grams already. And when they came in, they were about um, 1.8 grams. So it means um, there's something we are doing well uh, to see quite a number of uh, the fish growing um, in two weeks from 1.8 grams. Uh, this one is also uh, nine grams. So yes, we are, we are gradually getting there. We are gradually getting there. So um, tilapia grows a little bit more faster. Um, just that sometimes you have a catfish going a little bit, slightly faster than uh, that of uh, tilapia. And inside the waters, it's a bit warm. It's a bit warm. Um, normally in the evenings, what I see is um, if I would have a lot of mortalities, um, it normally happens um, early in the morning. So when I visit the pond early in the morning, then I would see a lot of the fish uh, dead. And I'll, I'll show you a footage of uh, what happened over the weekend because I wasn't uh, available. Um, I want to also show you something as to how I am aerating these guys. Um, the current, okay? So when it comes to aerating your pond, you have to look at the size of your pond and you have to make sure there isn't too much activity every single time in your pond. So the aerator has been stationed at one point. If a fish doesn't want a lot of activity, because over here, because of the aerator, there's a lot of activity going on in here. Then you see that they'll be swimming across this side, but whenever they need a lot more oxygen, then they'll swim towards uh, this end. Uh, what I'm also doing, as I said, a lot of the waste uh, from my pond tends to sediment. So what I do is whenever I am changing the water, you see, there's a lot of organic matter in this particular pond because I have a lot of fish in the pond. They are producing a lot of waste. And after a while, you realize that uh, a bit of the waste in the pond sediments, right? So if I want to uh, use that for my, my grow beds, then I just put something down here and then I collect that water. You realize that the water that comes out first normally is uh, more dirtier in quotes and so that is the kind of water i'm looking out for actually and then i take that to the other end of the of my grow bed area and then i just top up a little bit uh, so that is for this particular tank uh, we, we were able to get a fish about 23 grams and then the smallest i saw was about uh, five grams let's move to the second tank and then from there we'll come to our catfish So the reason why people culture tilapia or the reason why I, um, I would choose to culture tilapia is because one, their growth rate and then also um, they are easier to take care of to an extent. Catfish is a lot more easier as compared to these guys. Um, they are tasty. People already want a lot of uh, tilapia. And uh, let me see what's happening in this pond. 
All right, so in as much as I'm not seeing uh, extreme growth in this pond, um, I think it's also not extremely bad because in terms of water changes, I, um, I used to change water for these tanks. As I said earlier, I was doing like um, almost a thousand, um, hundred liters. And then I wasn't really doing a lot of changes over here. But then over the weekend, um, I haven't had enough time to concentrate on these guys. But let me see what I am seeing. Okay, so I'm seeing a very small size fish. And let me wait and see, because they came in at uh, 0.2 grams. My skill is already at uh, three. Let me turn it for you guys. Okay. So now that my skill is on uh, zero grams, I want to take the tiniest one here to see. Again, these guys have been here for just two weeks. And he's down. Let me try again. All right, let me try another size and see if it is my skill that is being faulty or it's something else. So let me take a bigger fish. If it says it's three grams, then my skill is just tripping. It's a bit funny because uh, I want you guys to pay close attention to this guy. I can't, it looks like he doesn't have an eye or the eyeball is destroyed. This is how the eye is supposed to look like. You can see the eye nicely. And then when I turn it to the other side, you can see the eye. So sometimes I think um, we have to spend a lot of time to examine our fish and through the examination if there is an outbreak of disease you can easily identify it by just spending some time with your fish uh, but i'll still go ahead and weigh him and see so according to my scale this fish is uh, seven grams which is also not bad uh, so my scale is not broken so i'll just uh, drop these guys here and uh, the idea for these guys will be that um, I am going to have my solar panels going to be functioning and then um, the next set of things I'll do will be that um, I'll get in some probiotics. So probably add some probiotics, add um, aeration and see if there will be a change in the growth rate of the fish. Because uh, from my observation, I feel like the fish in the aerated tank is doing a lot more as compared to that of this tank. Let's move to the catfish. So when we come to the, the catfish tank, uh, this tank was installed very, very recently. Um, over the weekend, uh, I just, one person job, I just came, cleaned this tank and then put some stones and I quickly fixed uh, this outlet. Now, um, the average size of this catfish is around uh, five to seven grams and I would like to still weigh them because uh, we want to have that on record so that we can properly um, watch their growth rate. So uh, let me just go in and then try and then uh, weigh some of them. So I have my scale and then my net. Uh, for catfish, they are a lot more active. If you come closer and take a look at them, you would see that the moment they realized um, I was coming a little bit closer, they decide now you see them moving like a lot more and someone will say how is your tank a little bit uh, clean the tank, the tank is clean because um, I just fed them a little bit I've not really given them a lot of uh, food to eat so let me try and see if we can get good so this is how our catfish looks like and these guys have been here for uh, since Friday they were stocked on uh, Saturday. Today happens to be a Monday. So they've been here for like only three days. So for three days, 
I want to try and see if I could weigh and see if I could get. When you're not feeding your, your fish, it grows leaner. I'm finding it difficult to get the actual weight, so I'm bringing it to like a more stable ground. Okay, so now we have it at uh, zero grams. All right, yeah, as I said, so this is seven grams, right? So just drop them back in the tank. And um, why would someone want to uh, culture catfish? Again, they are hardy. Their body is hardy and um, very tasty. Uh, in my opinion, I prefer to eat grilled catfish to uh, grilled uh, tilapia. All right, so um, after observing the fish in my tank, I can see about, um, I think I can see like a head, uh, which is a sign of uh, mortality already. Um, now, catfish, they, they feed on each other. And so if they are not getting the feed in right, as to the time you're supposed to feed them and all, you have something like this. And in some situations, you can have this uh, dissolving totally in your pond. Therefore, you think, oh, I had 1,000 catfish, and then because you are not changing the water, you are not seeing what is beneath the pond, uh, you may not see this guy. So I have with me here, uh, they are seven grams, so we'll say that they are juveniles, and seven grams, the size of feed we give them is uh, two mm. So I have two mm feed over here, and let's feed our catfish. This is the first time they are trying this two mm feed. Um, I used to give them that of the tilapia, and I'm trying to now give them the two mm feed. Uh, let's see if they would enjoy and they would like it. So first of all, they have to take some time to try and um, tell if this is something they would enjoy, right? So we just need about one fish trying to pick it up. And then after picking it up, you see all of them will start running towards it. So this is, and it's very beautiful. So now they know there is uh, some uh, feeding activity ongoing. And feeding of catfish is very nice to watch because you see them making a lot of noise. You see them moving and they eat. So when you're feeding your fish, you feed your fish, you take your time and you feed. You don't feed all of them in a rush. When you feed, uh, generally I do say that uh, feeding of your fish should take about like 10 minutes. And in the 10 minutes, you are using that to observe the fish. You are trying to see how they are responding. And the question would be, how, how are these fish able to tell that uh, there is uh, feed in the water aside seeing it? So the catfish has something like a whiskers, right? And that whiskers is known as a barbell, right? And that is what they used to sometimes sense uh, uh, that uh, food is going to be extremely nutritious and then they rush in for that. So this is the first time they are eating and uh, it's quite impressive to see that they are eating a lot more because this is a new brand of feed that they are trying for the first time. And so um, as farmers, sometimes when you're changing a brand from let's say brand A to brand B, sometimes the fish may eat a little bit less uh, but then, yeah, these guys are, are, are really hitting it up for me. Uh, the quantity here will be um, 194. Uh, yes, 194, with an average rate of uh, 7 grams. And so, if in our next episode, I'll probably show you how we calculate the feed we give our catfish so that it will be easy for you to also calculate the, how, the quantity of feed you have to give your fish from time to time. And so there are some, um, a bit of the feed also up here. And um, now I've realized that their feeding has kind of like uh, reduced. So I'm now going to feed the tilapia. So if you observe the feed, right, you can realize that this is the, that of the catfish. It's a bit bigger. And look at that of the tilapia. It's very, very small. 
okay? And it's very important that you know what size of feed to give at what time so that you don't probably feed your older fish a uh, smaller size because they'll, they'll take a lot more to be, to be full. And then also, you don't want to also feed your fish too much bigger size. It will be difficult for them to be able to eat. Uh, for tilapia to, well, well, how they feed is when they pick from the top, they go down, pick from the top, they go down. And uh, uh, again, you pay, you take your time, you pay attention to them. Now, when you're feeding them, sometimes it is necessary that this aerator is put off so that there's a, a, a bit less activity happening in the pond. And then the fish can uh, probably uh, now pay attention to the feed. Okay, but I've decided not to put this aerator off and I'm going to do that for the second pond as well. Now, for the second pond, because I don't have aerators, um, I normally see the fish coming to the top surface of the pond and then they come and then they come and then pick, um, I, I, I think, pick, uh, pick in air and then also re release in some air. So I want you guys to come and take a look at um, what's happening here. Yes, yeah, so you can see that uh, I'm not aerating this tank. So there's a, the, the activity in this pond is a little bit different from the activity in that pond. Um, sometimes if the oxygen level in the tank is a little bit low, you can see some things like this. And then also, if it happens like that and you're feeding your fish, sometimes you have your fish eating the way they are supposed to. So um, I've put in some feed and they are not really, really rushing in for the feed. And so as a farmer who wants to farm in your backyard, just know that if you don't have a lot of oxygen in your tank, your fish will not be running for your feed. Uh, they, they, some of them are even swimming past the feed because oxygen is of importance to them to feed. And so the quick thing I have to do now from here will be that I have to reduce the water and then introduce some new fresh water into this particular tank. And then all of these things I'm seeing would reduce. So to be able to uh, work on this outlet, because uh, I moved this outlet to the other end. And so what you just have to do is, I have this with me here. I have a small two inches pipe that I had cut already. And so I'm going to fix that here. And just like this. Um, I decided to use glue this time so that I stop the leakages. If you're a fish farmer, sometimes you have to also uh, become a plumber and amongst other things because in big farms, by the time you'll be waiting for your plumber or some guys to come and fix a problem for you, oh, the situation may have escalated. So you fix this one in, you push this in, and then this is a reducer. There are two different types of reducers, but this is what I'm using now. And so it will reduce to one inch. So again, I put some glue all around this. and then some glue on the inside. And then we fix this. <clears throat> so yeah, so now this is how I've reduced it to, from the two inches to this. And then um, the next thing will be, so, this was from um, an old setup that we had, um, an elbow pipe, air valve, and then um, what you just do is you do this on the inside. Now. And then Let's push this in. 
and you wait for a while. And yeah, that's it. You are done with the outlets from uh, your tank. So some of these things are very easy to do. Um, so again, if it's a square tank like any of these guys, you should be able to do this. So now you have two valves. You have this valve and then you have this valve as well. But then when you open this or you set this one at a flow rate, then you use this one open and then water comes in every time. Whenever I want to change any of these things or take this thing off, I just have to turn this bit. After turning it all around, I'll be able to have um, my outlet um, all out. Yes, yeah, so um, farming in backyard spaces shouldn't be too difficult if you are following this series. Uh, as you've seen the different things that we've done, if you have any concerns, any questions, if you have any contribution, the comment section is available for you. You can share, ask, and I would make sure I'll give you a response to that. Uh, we are doing tilapia because uh, again, it's easier to culture tilapia, feed on tilapia, and then we have some uh, catfish as well. So in our next episode, we are going to see us install some uh, solar panels so we can aerate every single pond and we can measure the growth rate. Again, we are also going to add some probiotics in this particular tank whilst we aerate to see if uh, what will be the advantages, the disadvantages, and then the problems that we may face. Also in the next episode, we are going to show you how you can calculate for the feed for your fish. So you know that if I have tilapia in this pond, um, how many fish should I have in the pond? And what is the quantity of feed I need to give to them? So that you don't overpopulate your tank, you don't have too much fish in that particular tank. And we are going to do the same for catfish and a lot more insightful things that we would like to share with you in our next episode. So backyard farming, sometimes it's not all about just having fish in your space but then it also means that you want to make some money. Therefore, sometimes fish farming becomes a numbers game. If you culture fish in this tank with the time, the water, the resources and the feed, it may not necessarily yield much as compared to culturing fish in tarpaulin tanks. Tarpaulin tanks help you to scale and scale very appropriately. For that reason, we have packages available for guys who would want to start some fish in their backyard. And so we have um, a package for 250 fish. Um, we'll bring the tarpaulin, we'll do the installation ourselves. We'll come with some fish and then we'll come with some feed. And then we have package for 500 fish. We have package for 700. And the last one will be for a thousand fish. If you'd want us to do a bigger size in terms of trying to scale very big, then we'll come in and then get you something by doing a feasibility and they will be able to now arrive at something that you'd be very much interested in. Farming can be very difficult, but then if you follow these tips, I'm sure it's going to be very easy for you. I'll catch you next week. Bye.